Hi friends, welcome back to The Hangout. Now before we dive into this episode, I want to make sure that you are caught up with the latest season of High School Musical, the musical, the series, because there will be spoilers in this episode. Now if you haven't caught up, go watch it and then come back and hang out. Also, this video is not sponsored, but I wanted to give a special shout out to Disney Plus for helping out and making these episodes possible. Now, let's get into it. Today, we're hanging out with the talented actor who can play the mischievous, devious, maybe sometimes crazy characters from Claire from Days of Our Lives to now Lily on Disney Plus's High School Musical, the musical, the series. Um, you will fall in love with her only to maybe hate her characters. Um, let's welcome Olivia Rose Keegan to the show. <laughs> What an, what an intro. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited to be here. Like we were saying, I, I don't think I've ever been on a podcast before, but I'm an avid listener. So I'm, I'm very excited. There's a first for everything. So I'm excited that this may just be your first. Exactly. <laughs> um, I got all your other cast members to do this as well, but we're going to start it off with the Ryan and Sharpay warm up. Give me your best. Ma. Oh, oh, so fun. Okay. <clears throat> I love it. I love it. Um, and of course, I want to congratulate you on getting the 2020 uh, Daytime Emmy Young Actors Oh My Gosh Award. Olivia. Woo! How did you feel in that moment? What was that like for you? Thank you so much. Oh, wow. It was during the COVID year. Uh, so it was such a beautiful um, cherry to put on top of, of that, of this past year. Um, it, it didn't feel real for, for many reasons. Also, the reason being that, you know, of course, there wasn't a ceremony and we were just watching from home and you don't get up in, in, on the stage in front of everyone. And um, but I'm so grateful that it was from home because in a lot of way, I, I think there were many benefits, uh, such as me getting to be there with my family um, and my loved ones. And um, it, it was just so, yeah, they would have never been able to come to the ceremony. So uh, I think in, there were a lot of benefits to that. It's, I, it still doesn't feel real. Like the Emmy's there and it's downstairs and I walk by it. But if I if I want to, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's there and sometimes it's downstairs. I like switch her home around. Yeah. Uh, but if I want to like understand the, the depth of that, it takes me like five minutes to, to recap, like what that means and winning it. And then I'm, it still doesn't feel real, but then it kind of sinks in. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been crazy. You fall down a little rabbit hole and then you're like, oh, what does life mean? <laughs> Exactly. I know. What are we doing here? What does it all mean? <laughs> um, before we dive into all the high school musical stuff, I want to talk about your background. Let's get to know Olivia. Like, how did you fall in love with, I guess, performing arts and maybe acting and just music as a whole? Uh huh. Oh, OK. So it's kind of interesting and ironic because I know so much less about than other people about about musical theater in the cast. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I. Um, I started with musical theater and that's how I caught like the, the bug when I was, <laughs> when I was seven and I did a bunch of plays in my, just in the local community theater group. And, um, I really fell in love with it. And I woke up one day and all of a sudden decided that I wanted to pursue on camera acting. And my parents of course thought it was a, a big old phase and they said, no, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> or, you know, go follow your dreams, but like, you know, stay, stay with the local community theater. It's just a phase. So, uh, which is totally understandable. I was that kid who like went through a bunch of different phases and, right. you know, swore I wanted to do one thing and then woke up the next day and wanted to do, wanted to do another thing. But uh, after a good year of begging them every single day and getting off the school bus and being like, mom, dad, school's getting in the way of my career. Apparently I was that every time I got off the bus, um, they eventually said like, okay, fine, go do it yourself. And so I searched online and I found myself an agent in San Francisco and I wrote her a letter. Uh, and then I think I was about 10 at this point um, and then I, I, I signed with her and then she starts sending me down to LA and 
then my parents realized, oh, she's serious about this. And then they've been very supportive and I've been so grateful for them. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's so exciting. Thank I feel you. like, did you grow up with like the Hannah Montana, like that's a Raven sweet life and everything? Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. Wizards, uh, all of it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Cause I feel like that was like a big thing for a lot of us growing up and being like, Oh, that's why I want to be on screen. <laughs> oh, like the Hannah Montana was the thing that inspired me to, that's a like, mm. good point. Maybe, maybe subconsciously I was watching right. an episode and it planted a little seed <laughs> somewhere. And I, that's why I decided that's hilarious. I've never thought of that, but you could be right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what one of your first like musical theater performances was? Yes, I did Charlotte's Web. That was my first one ever. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, it was really fun. And then after that, I did Annie. But Charlotte's Web was like the, that was my first. And that was for, I think, seven and under. So I was just Aww. like a stack of corn or something standing in the background. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what I was. Maybe I had one line. But then for Annie, I, I auditioned for Mrs. Hannigan. And I went in and I sang Little Girls, Little Girls. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to do that, but I didn't get Mrs. Hannigan. I got one of the orphans, but I think I was the only eight-year-old who went in there wanting Mrs. Hannigan. I love it. I love it. Um, I want to talk about, I guess you had like a phase of astrology. Your birthday is like around November 22nd. My birthday is November 25th. So oh my I'm God, like, my I'm Sagittarius like, queen. Yes, Hi. Sagittarius, yes. Are you, okay, like, are you on the cusp or are you oh, like, what God. is that? That, wait, how do you know I had an astrology phase? Is this like- I think I read somewhere. I think I read I somewhere. Love, I'm like, have I, have I, I absolutely have. And I'm just like, now I'm that girl who goes around <laughs> and talks about it every two seconds. Moon signs, star signs, everything. And I have to know yours. Oh, oh man. So yes, I'm on the day of the cusp, but I'm born in the morning. So I'm a Scorpio. Okay. I think 9.30 or 9.23. Uh, okay. So now everyone can know my ascendant. I'm a Sagittarius <laughs> thing. Uh, <laughs> So I'm a Sag rising and a Taurus moon and, uh, oh, it's, it's a fun rabbit hole to go down. What, what are you? You're a Sagittarius. Do you know your I'm, I don't know. Oh my gosh. No. If you know all of that, I don't know. Teach me. Cause I don't know all of that. There's like so many different levels and everything. And I was yeah. like, if she's, if she's educated in that, maybe she could educate me on it. <laughs> I would love to. There's, it's super easy. There's just, um, you just plug in your birthplace and the time you were born to, to a site. And then it gives you. Right all your planets and their placements. And then you can just kind of Google what, what they mean and traits of that. Okay. If it okay. resonates. Of course, you know, it's probably all not true and it's all bull, but um, you get to a certain point where some of the stuff is so weirdly specific that you're like, mm, the stars gotta mean something. Okay. But, I was gonna ask, do you relate to it? Like, are you very similar to your signs? Like is accurate? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there's, you know, been a couple of experiments and uh, there's, there's an experiment where it, it kind of proves that if you tell a, a person growing up, you are a Scorpio and the main traits of a Scorpio are A, B, and C, that person will slowly start to embody those traits. Um, so maybe I've just done that because, uh, because of that. But um, because I, I know that's a, a, a thing that happened, okay. but I, I don't know. I think it's different for everyone. There's some yes. signs where there's no common thread and I know lots of different people of that sign and I don't see any like particular common threads. It happens a lot with Libras to me. Mm. I don't, I don't know. There's just the fiery ones and everything. Yeah. Well, Libras are air. And no. so, um, I know. I don't know. I, I know a bunch of Libras. Both of my parents are Libras, but there's no common thread. They're all like on different ends of the human spectrum with different personalities. But everything else, I, I'm I'm getting creepily good at like guessing people's signs. Um, there was a I was working with a hairstylist a, a little bit ago, and uh, she said something, and she was just like, "No one can guess my sign," and I said, "You're a Leo." And she said, "What?" Because I was right. And then she said something about uh, her boyfriend. She was like, yeah, I was whining the other day. And I was like, oh, is he a cancer? Is he a cancer man? <laughs> and she was like, yeah. That's a superpower. I feel like that's a superpower. I guess. It's getting kind of scary. 
but uh, I guess I guess maybe it is my superpower. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay, let's talk about Days of Our Lives before we dive into High School Musical. Mm-hmm. Four years on the show, you grew up. Like I guess you grew up on that show. What was that like for you to get into all of that and just ha- learn a lot off of that set? Oh, I think I learned like everything that I know from that set because mm-hmm. I did grow up on that set and they saw me go through all my awkward phases. So <laughs> uh, it's it's interesting to have those like broadcast on television. Like, oh, the world saw me in like my peak rock bottom awkward phases. That's great. Oh uh, but but no, it's been so wonderful. And I think a lot of people say, say this where soap operas are just the best boot camp uh, mm. because you are doing uh, you are running through about 70 scenes a day at least on days of our lives and on high school musical you we do about like you know sometimes one sometimes four right but yeah you're doing about 60 to 70 scenes uh, oh my God. and there some of them are short scenes but sometimes you right. go to that with 50 pages of dialogue uh, and you have to get through it all and get one shot. So you just have to rely on your instincts and kind of just go head first uh, and work off of that adrenaline that it gives you. Um, so it really pushes you. It's such a sink or swim world that That's crazy. you don't know your limits until you're pushed to new limits. And then you're like, oh, OK, I can I can do this. Uh, so it really gave me a lot of confidence in that way as far as knowing what what I can handle um and working with time constraints and large amounts of of work it was so interesting coming to high school musical and so wonderful because my first day on set we had like a two hour long conversation about my hair and what to do with my hair and what would be the most in character and I I haven't had the luxury of time in so long that it was just mind-boggling to be able to um think about details like that again and be able to dig my nails into that sort of stuff so that's been really fun let's talk about high school musical what was your audition process like going into all of it oh uh really fun actually which is I feel like you can't say that about a lot of auditions really Yeah, well, you know, it's just a stressful and very unnatural uh, circumstance where totally, you know, because it's it's cold and it's weird. But I I love it. I still love auditions, and hopefully, we get back to in person auditions soon because it's it's different being able to work with the energy of someone and just also getting the validation afterwards, even if it's just like, thank you so much for coming in, instead of just sending the the self tape into the (laughs) black hole abyss. Uh, But Anyway, back to the high school musical audition process. Um, it was very fun. And ever since I, I walked in to the, to the audition room for my first audition, everyone involved was just so nice and which is so refreshing. Um, yeah, the casting director, the casting directing team is just so sweet. Uh, and the callback was at the, the Disney building that I've been going to since I was like, a very young young girl and it's so amazing to finally like have gotten um one of those roles because I've been going to that building for the callbacks like so for for a long time now and so it was a full circle moment and I couldn't be happier as for the project that it, it worked out on um but there yeah there were other people there auditioning for Lily and we all just chatted for five hours and became really good friends and uh it was just such a sweet, you know, collaborative environment overall. And I met, uh, I met Roman that day because they also oh. flew him in and um, there were other Howie's there and we all just talked. I remember Dara and her mom were both there and they're both magical people. Did you have an audition song? What was your audition song? My audition song was I Found a Boy by Adele. Um, yeah it's a great song and it was an interesting choice looking back because it didn't really you know when you think Lily that's not really the vibe or the song that you might associate first with her totally but um I just love Adele's music and you know uh it's nerve-wracking going into a room with a a round table full of the business biggest executives at Disney and them being like yeah why don't you sing a song for us acapella oh my god uh, but it, it was uh, it was really fun, and all of them, everyone in the room, and everyone in the waiting room, could not have been 
kinder and, and more welcoming all around. Oh, that's so good to hear. Um, your character, Lily, is described as violently competitive. Can we talk? I just laughed when I read that, honestly, because I was like, that's accurate. Because there's this one scene where, okay, spoilers ahead. If you have not seen the latest episodes of High School Musical, the musical series, go watch them and then come back. But there's this one scene where you were just drinking scorching hot coffee and you're just chugging it. What was in the cup on the day? Like, what were you actually drinking? Oh, I, I'm glad that you thought something was in the cup because oh, nothing was in the cup. <laughs> so I was actually right here. Thank you. That, that was actually a big struggle for me. And I'm so glad that you thought something was in the cup because it's much harder to think that that thing oh, totally. than, than I thought. Um, so <laughs> I'm really glad that that worked out. But yeah, no, she's a she's a violent girl for sure. <laughs> um, I want to talk about episode two when you got to do that big um, bridge part for Belle. How, when did you guys shoot that? I guess it was before COVID before COVID. Mm -hmm. How, how long ago was that? What was it like getting to do that? Oh, I think that was maybe March, February or March of, of 2020. Oh, right. Wow. Before everything happened. And wow. as far as the whole shutdown, I think that was one of my first, that might've been my second day on set. So it was, excuse me, it was very nerve wracking, but, uh, so fun in a great way to just get into it, you know, instead right. of digging the feet in the water, just diving right in. Uh, it was just such a, such a great vibe because we were all hanging out and no masks. Um, but it, even when we did, it was just so wonderful to be able to have human connection be, and be able to have any sort of a job during that time. I'm so grateful for that. Totally. But yeah, singing the bell bridge, sorry, if you play like, going off on many different tangents and they're like, oh, that is podcast world. You can do that in podcast world. Me, I gotta, I gotta start my own podcast or just do, do it. Yes. yes. I go off. Um, okay. Yes. The, the bridge bell audition. So fun. Uh, I was nervous. I didn't know what to expect. Um, especially walking on to a set like that where, you know, everyone's already gotten super comfortable around each other and super close over season okay. one, of course. And it can be, you know, sort of an intimidating situation on paper, but within five minutes of walking into my first day on set, like all of those feelings melted away and everyone um, on the cast and crew could not have been just any more welcoming and warm and kind. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that was just a very, very fun day and a great way to start things off. Oh. I love it. In episode six, which I guess just aired today, is airing today. Yeah. The beginning silhouette, you and your bell dress. Oh my gosh. As much as we like don't like Lily as a character, I feel like we have to love her because she's just like so passionate about getting that lead role. Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone just has to work hard to get like what they want and nothing's going to stop her. What was it like working with um, Andrew, who is a new member of the cast as well in that moment? Mm -hmm so wonderful I remember that day of filming was just crazy because I we both had on these brilliant Broadway caliber costumes and we just looked at each other every five seconds and we were like this is not work is this work question mark this does not feel real why is this considered a job like this <laughs> what is life uh because it just doesn't feel like work we're just going and literally playing the highest form of dress up and and getting to do what we love so that was incredible yeah at least at least hopefully people can love to hate lily yeah um i think she is super super violently determined um <laughs> and you know she hasn't yet learned that you don't have to knock other people down in order to to get what you want uh hopefully she will learn that lesson um, cause you don't have to do that obviously, but, uh, yeah, she definitely knows what she wants. And I think she has a lot of, a lot of admirable qualities, you know, it's interesting because as an actor, if your character is, is evil, if they're going around killing people, you have to still be justified and, and get behind what you're doing. So to have to right. do that for these, you know, meaner characters is very fun. It's a fun challenge. Yeah, I guess people sometimes struggle separating the character from the actor. 
for yeah. you, what's what are like the core differences? I, I'm assuming you're not evil at heart. You were, well, you were super sweet <laughs> from like the last 20 minutes of us talking. <laughs> it's cool. Okay. Glad I'm giving up the vibe. <laughs> uh, oh, the main key um, key differences. Hopefully there's a lot. Hopefully I'm not too similar. Um, the main difference is, is uh, I, I definitely know that you can't you can't go down the rabbit hole of like starting to compare yourself to, to others and compete with others. And you can only compete and compare, you, you can only compete with yourself. Uh, Cause the second you start doing that with others um, in this industry and in every industry, uh, it's just an endless black hole that really isn't going to get you anywhere. It's, it's okay. tempting. And I, you know, I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty of it, but it's, you know, it's nice to know that that's, that's not really going to get you anywhere. Um, so I'm better about that, <laughs> better about not like being really mean uh, and manipulative to other people, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but yeah, the, we definitely have the things we have in common. I am very ambitious. I am determined. But like I said, I try to, you know, I'm, I'm mainly determined to beat myself at my own game. Um, but yeah, hopefully there's a lot of differences. Hopefully I'm not too sad. How, how do you sort of prepare to get into that like schemey mindset then when you become Lily? Yeah, well, that's the thing. You have to, when you're doing, you have to justify why you're doing everything. So when I'm, you know, being a major not nice person <laughs> to, to all of these wonderful, beautiful people in the cast, um, the wonderful thing about acting is you can say anything you've ever wanted to say to anybody you've ever wanted to say it to. So you, it's just a little switch of, of the person you're talking to and their name. And then you're like, oh, great. I got to finally purge my demons with this person. So the, the magic of imagination comes in handy for sure. Uh, and um, yeah, it's just, you know, you, all of those, all of those evil evil character you know I don't know if Lily like is evil at the end of the day but all of those mean tendencies and mean things you have to somehow get behind and flip it so that you're in the right right so so that's mostly how I do so when I'm I'm saying these lines I'm not being like oh time to scheme and be evil it's like hey you did me wrong and now I'm gonna bully you for it <laughs> uh yeah I love it. I feel like going back to you and Andrew, I feel like Antoine is Lily's like LeFou to your Gaston. Oh, yes. That's a great, great uh, analogy that I haven't, I haven't connected those dots before. That's exactly what, what our relationship is. Um, he's just my little minion. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not great the way I treat him, but it's so fun. And working with him is just so fun. And I think everybody should just pay attention to Antoine. If he's in the background of any scene, I promise you he will be doing something so funny. Uh, oh my God. So just keep your eye on him because he is always doing something brilliant and something new and something unexpected and just it's freaking hilarious. So <laughs> I can't wait for everyone, for us to everyone to see the rest of the season. What do you want people to take away from the rest of the season or take away from your character as well? Oh, um, I think the beautiful thing about the show is there is something in there and a storyline in there that every single person can uh, feel related to, which is something so, so beautiful and that not every show has. So and as far as Lily, I hope that people uh, learn how not to act <laughs> when going through your hormonal teenage years. <laughs> um, and uh yeah, I hope it gives you a good example of uh, the epitome of what what not to let happen to you when you're going through your teenage years right. uh, or, or any years, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, and maybe some people will end up seeing the humanity in her too uh, mm -hmm. and why she is the way she is or not. But, you know. I love it. Yeah. I want to talk about music as well, just if we have a little bit more time. Um, yeah. There's an Olivia on the charts already. You're creating your own music as well. When can we expect music from you? Like, what are you creating? What are you cooking up? Uh, no dates or anything particular right now. 
Um, and yes, we do have an Olivia on the charts and it's been the most beautiful thing to watch. I get like- There's room for another Olivia. There's room for another Olivia. <laughs> you know, maybe one day. I just, I, whenever I think about it, I just like get chills. I just, I'm, I can't talk about it for too long without like tearing up. It just makes me so happy because there's nobody more deserving in this, in this it's world. Crazy. It's so crazy. It's so crazy, but it's not surprising. Like, True. Oh, it's so deserved. It's so deserved. Um, but yeah, no particular dates for me. Um, I haven't, yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's been incredible to be around so many inspiring people and just being around everyone in the cast who's so individually talented in their own way. I just try to soak it all up. Um, and it's, it's hard not to, because there's so much talent and it's just inspiring and it makes you want to make you want to create art yourself. And so I, I have been, and you know, one day, one day there will be dates, but uh, yes. we'll be in line. We'll be in line <laughs> <laughs> um, for our show, the hangout. We always want to talk about music. Um, how do you think music and this art form has kind of impacted your life over the years? It's a big question. You mm -hmm. can kind of digest it if you want. That's a big question, but uh, a great one. Um, like how has music impacted my life, life. in general? Yeah, and, or oh. maybe in a specific way too. Yeah, oh man, I think it's impacted my life obviously in a huge way. Um, it's like the, the universal language. Um, and I think no matter what you've been through in life, uh, you know, if you haven't been through heartbreak before or, but you've been through a, a friend heartbreak or, or a loss of any kind or, or a happy feeling, it's, it's really just the universal language, uh, which is such a beautiful thing because you look at, look at Olivia's music and you, you know, and that made me think of the, the SNL skit where you have these, you know, 30 something year old men being like, yeah, you know, that song makes me cry. Uh, it, it just reaches so many people in so many different ways. Um, and it's, it's just, yeah, I've never, you know, it really helps you not feel alone, I think, because whatever you're going through, um, you know, obviously it can make you feel alone and you can listen to a song and maybe they didn't go through the exact thing that you went through, but, um, but it, it still speaks to that and makes you feel uh, much less alone. So yeah, maybe that's a good, a good thing that it did good answer i love it i love it thank you that was olivia rose keegan on the hangout guys thanks for listening thank you thanks for hanging out i hope you enjoyed this episode leave us a comment and review on our youtube apple podcast spotify or wherever you're tuning in from make sure to like and subscribe as well so you know when new episodes come out I would also really appreciate it you can follow us along on all of our socials at the hangout ca that's it for now we'll see you next week